Question number one. Explain why the warmest time of the day is usually in the afternoon, even though the sun's rays are more direct at noon. Earth materials retain heat, so even though the sun's isolation is getting less, the earth is still warming. Question number two. On a calm sunny day, why is the air next to the ground normally much warmer than the air several feet above? Air near the ground warms by conduction. So if no mixing from wind, it will warm only lower layers. Question number three. Explain how incoming energy and outgoing energy regulate the daily variation in air temperature. When incoming energy exceeds outgoing, the air temperature rises. When outgoing exceeds incoming, the temperature fails. Question number four. Draw a vertical profile of air temperature from the afternoon, early morning, just before sunrise. Explain why the temperature curves are different. The ground warms and cools faster than the air immediately above it. Number 5. Explain how radiational cooling at night produces a radiation temperature inversion. As outgoing energy exceeds incoming, ground cools. Air immediately above it cools by conduction and hence a radiative inversion. What weather conditions are best suited for the formation of a cold night and a strong radiation inversion? It is the clear sky, light winds, long night, and dry air. Explain why thermal belts are found along hillsides at night. Thermal belts exist because cold dense air slides down by mountainside into valley, creating an inversion and hence a thermal belt. List four measures farmers use to protect their crops against the cold. Explain the physical principle behind each method. First, helicopter, it mixes air. Second, orchard heaters. It warms air around trees by convection. Next, spray blossom. Next, spray blossom, it is for plant not to freeze under the ice. Last, flood or charge. Water has high heat capacity. Next, why the lower branches of trees most susceptible to damage from low temperature? It is because the lower temperature are near the ground. Describe each of the controls of temperature. Number 10, Describe each of the controls of temperature. First is the latitude. It is colder toward poles and warmer near equator. Next, land water distribution. Heat capacity of each is different. Next, ocean current. Warm currents is moderate temperature. Last, elevation. Go up in altitudes, temperature drops. Question number 11. Look at figure 3.14, temperature map for January. And explain why the isotherms dip southward at to equatorward over the northern hemisphere. Based on land water's contribution, water cools lower than land. Next, during the winter, frost can form on the ground when the minimum dermatherms indicates a low temperature above freezing. Explain. It is because land is colder than air. Thermometer may be at altitude of 5 feet. And that air is above freezing, while ground is at freezing. Next question. Why did the first freeze in autumn and the last freeze in spring occur in the bottom land? It is because cold air is more dense and sinks to low spots. Explain why the daily range of temperature is normally greater in the dry regions than in humid regions, on clear days than on cloudy days. Atmosphere usually cools and warms at dry adiabatic lamps rate. Next, moist air retains heat. Cloudy skies keep IR in and hence ground is warmer. Why are the largest annual range of temperatures normally observed over continents away from large bodies of water? It is because ground warms quickly in a day and quickly cools at night. Two cities have the same mean annual temperature. Explain why this fact does not mean that their air temperature throughout the year are similar. First reason, it is an average. Second one, maybe near the coast, where the temperature range doesn't vary much. And the other may be inland where the range is large, but their average are the same. What is heating degree day? Cooling degree day 
and how to calculate. The heating degree day is based on assumption. Fox will turn on furnaces if the temperature is below 65 degree Fahrenheit. Cooling degree day is based on assumption. Fox will turn on AC if temperature is above 65 degree Fahrenheit. During a cold, calm, sunny day, why do we usually feel warmer than a thermometer indicates? It is possibly building a molecules in skin since wind is calm. That is called sensible temperature and it depends if you are standing on the sun or not. Assume the wind is blowing at 30 meter per hour and the air temperature is 50 Fahrenheit. Determine the wind chill equivalent temperature from the table. Under the condition listed above, explain why an ordinary thermometer would measure a temperature of 50 Fahrenheit at not much lower temperature. Negative 190 Fahrenheit. Number 2. Answer. Thermometer cannot be measured the effect of the wind. Besides, the wind chill is what you feel, not what it actually is. Next question. What atmospheric condition can bring on hypothermia? Atmospheric condition that can bring hypothermia is cold, wet, and windy day. Number 21. Someone says today the air temperature measures 99 degree Fahrenheit in the sun. Why does this statement have no meaning? It is because the thermometer will absorb radiant energy from the sun in addition to the energy from the air molecules. Number 22. Explain why the minimum thermometer is one of the smallest barbell shape index maker in the bore. It is because barber is indicator of minimum temperature and it is moved by the many cast of the liquid. Number 23. Briefly describe how the following thermometers measure air temperature in liquid in a glass, by metallic, radiometer, and electrical. In liquid in glass, energy moves liquid up and down inside the glass tube. In bimetallic, two metals bonded together. One expands or contracts more than the other. Electrical. A plate with electrodes on either side change in temperature and changes current across plate. Radiometer. It is an infrared, infrared sensor that measures emitted energy. Question for exploration. Number one. How do you think a thick layer of low clouds would affect the lag in daily temperature? Low thicker clouds most reflect sun's heat and this cools Earth's surface. Question number two. Which location is most likely to have the greater daily temperature range? A tropical rainforest near the equator or the desert site in Nevada? Explain. It is the desert site because it is very hot during the day and very cold during the night. Question number three. Explain why putting on a heavy winter jacket would be affected in keeping you warm even if the jacket has been outside in a sub freezing temperature for several hours. It is because of the materials of the coat that helps to trap our body heat and keeps us warm. Question number four. Why is the air temperature displayed on a bank or building mark usually inaccurate? The more required to change the temperature of a substance, the slower it cools. So the smaller gradient of the curve. Question number five. If you are forced to place a meteorological instrument shelter over asphalt rather than over grass, what modification would you have to make so that the temperature measurement inside the shelter were more representative of the actual air temperature? At night, the ground emits long wave radiation while not absorbing solar short wave radiation. This causes of cooling of the Earth's surface. Question number six The average temperature in San Francisco, California. For December, January, and February is 52 degrees Fahrenheit. During the same three-month period, the average temperature is each month. Virginia is 40 degrees Fahrenheit, yet San Francisco and Richmond have nearly the same yearly total of heating degree. Degree day. Explain.
Best weather that are suited in hands in the clear sky, calmness of the wind, air is dry, and snow on the ground during the winter months. Question number seven. How would the lag in daily temperature experience over land compare to the daily temperature lag over water? Because water hears and cools more slowly than land, the lag in daily temps over water is usually much larger than the than that experience over land. Question number eight. In Pennsylvania and New York, wine grapes are planted on the side of the hills rather than the in valleys. Explain why this practice is so common in these areas. It's because valleys tend to be colder at night than their hillsides. The cool air collects in valleys contributing to a low temperature. Last question in exploration question number nine. Suppose peas are planted in Indiana on May 1. If the peas need 1.200 growing degrees days before they can be picked, and if the average maximum, maximum temperature of May and June is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and the average minimum is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, on about what date will the peas be ready to pick? The peas are ready to pick in about 40 days.